All right, guys, so let's talk about 2D sonar. What you need to do is you need to take and write down or take a picture of your favorite settings because we're fixing to go into a restore to false. So once you get that done, you go in, you check all your settings, all your favorite settings. Let's go in and let's get this thing the way it was when you first received it. So we're going to hit menu, menu. We're going to go over to setup. We're going to go down to restore to false, and we're going to click to the right and click again to the right. Okay, now this thing's just been restored, so now we've got it where we need to start from. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll go up here, we'll push and hold the view button. Well, and we will bring up a 2D only view on the screen. There you go. All right. So normally what I would do is I would hit the menu button one time and I would go in and make adjustments to this screen, this, this express menu, I would make these adjustments. But what I'm going to do in this case, I want to talk a little bit more about the sonar tab, so I'm going to hit menu another time. I'm going to make sure that we are in the advanced mode. So here you go to the user mode and you go over to custom or advanced. Some of the earlier models had advanced. In this case, this is a Gen 4 Helix. This is custom. All right, so let's go to Sonar. Second tab from the left, moving to the right, Sonar tab. So let's go down to the display spectrum here. You've got full, narrow, and wide. Most of the time, full is the best choice. So on these Gen 3s and Gen 4s, you can change this range of frequency by using the check mark button. So you can hit it, and you can go to full, narrow, and wide modes. But for the majority of the time, I'll leave mine in the full mode. We're not going to mess with DI chirp, 360 chirp, SI, surface clutter. So surface clutter is the near surface returns up here. Uh, if those are an issue for you, you can back that down a couple of clicks. But I usually don't go any lower than three on that. 2D switch fire. So you've got clear mode and max mode. So I want you to look at the difference between a filtered view, which is the clear view, and the max mode, which is an unfiltered view. Let me exit out of the screen so that you can see the difference. A lot of times this is good when you're vertical fishing, but keep this in mind, when you use max mode, you'll need to decrease your sensitivity just a little bit. A lot of people really prefer this to vertical, to dropping on fish, but I, I can get a pretty good screen to drop on fish in the clear mode. So let's go back in there. Let's hit menu, menu, and let's go back and change it to, to clear mode, which will be where you'll keep it the majority of the time. Water column sensitivity does not apply. 2D sonar, only DI and SI. Images preset. Uh, whatever default is for that, don't mess with any of the fish ID stuff that forces the unit to try to figure out what is negatively buoyant in the water, a floating stick or a fish. RTS window, that's something we need to talk about. When you vertically fish, when you drop on fish, I prefer to use this RTS window. It shows you where the fish will rise up off the bottom and get closer to your bait. So I, I only use that when I vertically fish. So we're going to turn that back off. Bottom view is structure ID and white line. White line occasionally can be beneficial, but it, can kind of, it, it puts kind of a white coating across the bottom, which really makes fish pop. Those fish that are hugging are close to the bottom. So that's something that you can try out. But the majority of the time, it will stay on structure ID. Depth lines, that's your preference. SI range lines, your preference. Noise filter, okay, max depth. Now this is something that is very important to do. Usually about 20 to 30 feet deeper than you're planning on looking or fishing that day is where I will set my max depth. So I will come in here and I'll run this thing up, say 60, 70 feet. Some of you guys may fish, especially those that fish big waters, may fish much, much deeper to that, and you can adjust to that. But for my situation, 70 feet's okay there. All right, so I think we've got all of the bases covered there. Everything you really need to know. Oh, except for color bar.
Very important. This needs to stay on, in my opinion, the whole time that you've got 2D up. So the hardest or the more dense returns are in this uh, more of a darker red up here and your softer, less dense return or more of your lower bluish purple color down here. So what that will let you know is that right here, we've got obviously something very hard because that return has got a lot of the harder return in. These fish right here are, are bait fish and they are tightly packed and they almost present as kind of a red cloud there as these fish are right here. That's just, just bait balls right there that are real tightly packed. They're probably tightly packed because there's some predator fish around trying to chew on them. So always keep this in mind. When you see a return, the hard, the more dense return is the top of the scale. The less dense is going to be at the bottom. So now that we've kind of got a pretty good understanding of this, let's go and let's hit menu one time and let's make some adjustments to the screen. Usually with sensitivity, it only takes a couple of clicks to get it up there about where you need it. You know, to a lot of people that, that uh, near surface returns right there would drive them crazy. It doesn't really bother me. I would rather see some, some, um, some fish down here than I would worry about you know, turning my surface clutter way down because I think you can really affect your other returns by turning that too low anyway. All right, so I've got that on about 12, and this is going to be your what your eyes see best. I can see that pretty well, um, and I think I'm pretty close to being dialed in there. Contrast is not something that I really mess with. Occasionally, I'll bump it up one or two or down one or two. But it's just kind of whatever you whatever you see best with that. So with your upper and your lower range, you can set that, especially if you've got some of these near surface returns that you don't like to be on the screen. You can kind of take those, remove those from the screen by setting your upper range to three. Now remember though, anything from zero to three feet, you'll no longer have sonar returns. So if you choose to do that, and you don't think there's anything of value from zero to three feet, but for whatever reason that little near surface returns is, is a pain for you, then you can set your move your upper range up. What I'm going to do though is kind of show you the benefit of setting the lower range as well. So by bumping up this lower range. See how it's kind of enlarged the picture? You've just got a much more enhanced zoomed view by putting your lower range just a little bit below what the actual depth is. So I love to do that when I'm out there. I do that with 2D and, and uh, DI as well. All right, so your chart speed, we've already talked about that in several other videos. Sonar colors. That's going to be your what your eyes see best. And we've pretty much got that one dialed in. Let's go through it one more time real quick. Sensitivity, we're just going to bump that up or down. Just a scoosh. Your 2D contrast, I, I generally don't mess with that. Upper range, if those near surface returns are an issue, Lower range, I set the edges to a few feet lower or deeper than where I'm currently fishing that day. So that's pretty much it, guys. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Hey, guys. This is Justin. Danny's back here behind me. Hey, guys. We appreciate y'all watching this video. If you haven't watched the videos before this, go to YouTube. Check out Hummingbird Lessons. There should be a playlist on our YouTube channel. These videos are also posted on Facebook, Electronic Fisherman. If you've watched the videos, we hope that you, we've revealed some stuff to you regarding your hummingbird unit. The target audience we're trying to hit right now is people that are just simply trying to understand how to operate functions, sonar functions, setup, accessories. We're going to continue to try to put out that knowledge. We're going to keep it pretty basic for the time being regarding Mega 360, side imaging 2D, down imaging. We're going to try to get a grip on Mega Live. So here soon, we should be putting out stuff Mega Live. The manual down the road should also be getting a mega live update as well so mega live should be in the manual 
coming soon. We have not set a date on it yet. Mega 360 having 17 pages. We don't even know how many Mega Live will have. Our approach to education and learning and making sure you guys understand what we understand is basic knowledge. We're not going to try to complicate this and break down the engineering and give you all a complex explanation. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible because some of this can be complicated. If you are searching for advanced knowledge down the road, we're going to try to put out some of that stuff. Just wanted to reach out to you guys and let y'all know that we offer an advanced trading manual. This is the older manual that was released in February of 2019. It is now out of the game. This is the manual that was released in February of this year. Had a lot of revisions. We took some stuff out. Danny put out a lot of stuff in there. Definitely check out the manual. They're on sale right now. They're 15% off. I would definitely grab one while, while they're on sale. We offer the standard manual, which is a paper back and paper front. We offer a waterproof manual, which is waterproof. You can throw it in a boat and pull it out whenever you want to look at it. It is a great building block if you have a small amount of understanding on how to operate your unit. And it's tough having a thousand dollar unit and you can't see fish on it. We also offer a digital manual. The digital menu here soon will be on a new platform to where you can make annotations, you can write, you can highlight, and you can keep those. Guaranteed there is something you're going to pull from it. The videos skim the top of those topics regarding sonar tools. We promise you'll learn something from the manual. We hope that you learn something from the videos. We appreciate all the support. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks, guys. We appreciate the support. See ya.